Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Welcome to our show. On today's show, we're actually going to be discussing the ever-changing policies of customer service. When I started as an entrepreneur, the policies were pretty much the customer is always right. But is that still the case today? Uh, you know, in a day of social media, we're going to be hearing of a story about how one single customer impacted a multi-million dollar company. Uh, we have international speaker, author, and singer-songwriter Dave Carroll's on the show. <laughs> Amazing guy, very talented. You know, actually, uh, we were fortunate enough to catch up with Dave for a rare interview while he was here speaking with Columbia Southern University. And we're going to be looking at a brief clip of his viral video that not only went all around the country, but impacted the world. Uh, we're actually going to uh, be looking at the message that companies are giving off. And if you sell a product or a service and you're not sure the message that your company is conveying, stick with us. You won't want to miss a minute, I promise you. We'll be right back, everybody. Don't go anywhere. Come experience Nolan's. Savor award-winning steaks, Greek-style cuisine, fresh local seafood, and an extensive choice of wines. Whether you'd like to reserve the large private dining room, enjoy a meal on an outdoor deck, or rock the night away in our lounge, Nolan's, now celebrating 25 years of exceeding your expectations for casual fine dining, live entertainment, and dancing nightly. Real estate today offers incredible opportunities, low prices, and extremely low interest rates. Hi, I'm Amy Norris from Amy Sells the Beach. Right now, there are opportunities in all areas. Our team can help you put your money to work finding your dream or investment property. And if you're looking to sell, no one can give you better exposure to buyers and make your property stand out. Experience matters when looking for opportunity. I'm Amy Norris. See why we're number one at amysellsthebeach.com. When visiting Gulf Shores, Alabama, make sure to visit the Gulf Coast Zoo, home of the little zoo that could from Animal Planet. Get up close in our petting zoo. Enjoy our unique animal encounters. More than 300 monkeys, bears, reptiles, big cats, parrots, and more call a Gulf Coast home. Come on, go wild at the Alabama Gulf Coast Zoo. I'm here with entrepreneur, author, and speaker, Dave Carroll. Dave, welcome. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for giving me a few minutes. And I have to say, obviously, uh, millions of people have been following your story. Uh, there was a big story involving yourself uh, that uh, was kind of a sensation, not only on the internet, but I know you've been all over the talk shows. But before we get to that, uh, first and foremost, uh, you're a musician. And uh, you've been doing that for quite some time. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, how you got started in, in the music industry. Sure. Uh, I'm a Canadian, and I was going to university in Ottawa at Carleton University. And my brother and I entered a talent contest, and our friends suggested that we do that. And uh, that was the start of my music career. Yeah. I knew that I loved it, and it was something I wanted to do more of. So my brother and I started playing the pub circuit in Ottawa. And we started uh, just with my guitar and our two voices, and we started to build a following, uh, gig after gig. And a couple of years after that, we decided to move to Halifax, yeah. Nova Scotia, where I've been from ever since, and, and uh, developed a 20-year career as an independent musician. I have no uh, talent when it comes to playing instruments, but I always tell people, you know, in my other life, I would have been a rock star. Yeah. I'm a real music enthusiast. I think I would have tried to have been Bono, like in a different <laughs> world. Yeah. But uh, was there a time specifically you can recall that you kind of went through, okay, we're playing some local gigs, and uh, but this is really more than a hobby or, or, or something that I'm passionate about. I want to do this for a living. Was there a specific thought to say, hey, maybe we could, we could actually pull this off and get paid to do what we love? Uh, the very first gig I played, that first one that we did was a talent contest, and we tied for first place. And the prize oh. was to come back and uh, split $150 with the other band, who didn't right. show up. <laughs> So we only knew 20 songs, for, <laughs> and you needed 40 to get through a night. So we showed up, and we got the whole 150, but we did our set list twice. We did one to 20, and then we did it all over again, saying right. we had a request to do this one again, and we did it 20 more times. And uh, I felt like I was professional. That very first time, if they're paying me, I'm professional. That's the right. way I said it. And, uh, and I always wanted to be a musician. I thought everybody did, but I, I don't think they had the passion that I always wanted to do uh, and be. 
Well, and a lot of times, too, when you, when you think about being an artist or a musician or something, or even really an entrepreneur, I know a lot of times family and friends, especially when you're young, it's like, Mom, I'm going to be an artist or I'm going to be a musician. Uh, they're like, what? You know, you need to get a real job. And sometimes the greatest opposition is, is family and friends. Did you experience that or were you uh, uh, Opposite. Friends? Really? Opposite for me, yeah. Our, our parents, our dad is one of our biggest influences. That's why the oh, name right. is, uh, of our band with my brother is Sons of yeah. Maxwell, because yeah. our dad's name is Max. And he used to come in and sing to us when we were small. My brother and I shared a room, and our dad would come in with his guitar. And that was one of the early lessons about brand building for me, was that uh, my dad never really knew all the chords or the words to any of the songs he was singing. And we didn't realize it for years, <laughs> because what he sh showed us was uh, that you uh, you know, if you don't know the music, you sing louder, and if you don't know the words, you play louder. But don't let what you don't know get in the way of doing right. what you do know. And so uh, we took that lesson into our professional careers. And instead of showing people what we knew when we really weren't that good, we shared what we knew with the audience and created this sort of right. co-created experience. Well, that's great advice even now as entrepreneurs. You know, you don't focus so much on what you don't know, but just give people the value and show them what you do. Uh, and you mentioned uh, Sons of Maxwell. I know that recently you've been doing a lot of solo uh, work, but um, you, for years you've actually been playing uh, with Sons of Maxwell, which is your brother. What was it like to collaborate uh, so much with him creatively with, with family? Well, it makes it, in a sense, easy when you go into business with someone that you're so close to. Yeah, right. uh, you have a partner that, you know, when it, the downs don't seem so low and the highs are, are even better because you're sharing it with them and your family's all into it. Uh, Sons of Maxwell is, is my brother and I, but it's also my mom. Uh, she's been doing our mail order, wow. everything forever since before United Brace Guitars when people, there was no internet and people would send a letter to my mom with cash in it and say, we, we couldn't get your son's CD, can you send us one? So she would knit them a dishcloth as packing wow. for these CDs, right? And 20 years later, people still have these dishcloths because the quality was so good. And it's a metaphor for the way that we've operated our business. Yeah. And we were talking earlier. You said that you, you went out and played uh, your first gig, I think, in 89, mm -hmm. which I think the late 80s, early 90s were just this amazing time for, for music. But obviously, over the last couple of decades, I'm sure, like any industry, the music industry has probably changed quite a bit. Uh, have, you, have, you seen, have you seen quite a few changes in the music industry over massive. the time you've been in? Yeah, massive changes. When, when I first got in, there, the opportunity was there for my brother and I with the one guitar and two voices to actually eco to living and uh, go to places where that type of music was embraced. But we were also starting at the time when the music industry was very much at the highest levels about big money supporting very few artists and essentially becoming an impediment for people trying to reach a mass audience because you had to have the right manager, the right PR person, right company, and a right yeah. amount of money. And uh, that just isn't the case anymore. That's, that's evolved to the point that record companies are shrinking and shrinking, and they're just holding on to the market share that they have because social media has allowed people to reach mass audiences yeah. without uh, having a massive investment needed. Well, and even the way it used to be of, of you know, I, I remember at a time I went into a studio to do a couple of uh, entrepreneur type CDs and the whole deal with the behind the glass with the soundproof room and the, you know you have all the crew there that's just not necessary anymore like you said with the advancement in technology people can get a on their laptop and there's great software programs that they can put information out and upload it to places where people can buy but I, I think that do you feel like there's maybe uh, sometimes the market gets flooded with with music and maybe the quality overall has to come down and then maybe uh, I, I think most of the time there'll be a group that's really saying you know we're tired of all of this music we'd rather just focus on a few artists that really give real value and they're kind of searching for that that quality yeah uh, most definitely the, the there is an opportunity for more <laughs> people today than ever before to make music right I know in my own situation I do all of my vocals for my recordings at home in my little home studio. And uh, it's not soundproofed, I just have to wait till nobody's there. And right. I do it at home and I send those files to, or bring them with me to the studio and, and go to different studios to do things. And you can do that like never before, but I still say that the quality still has to be there, the content still has to be there for you to cut through the noise, especially now that everyone's able to do it. Right. You know, and uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the infamous YouTube video. Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, unlike most in the music industry, you've had 
uh, success enough to where you can just do what you love. And I know a lot of times as entrepreneurs or speakers, I always say like most speakers out there are terrible business people because they, they love to speak, but they don't understand the business of speaking and they all have jobs to kind of support their habits, so to speak. Right. But you've actually been able to uh, support yourself professionally as a, as a professional musician. Um, but then all, you, you also have had this, this video come out that I want to talk about that has just really was a game changer. It's kind of changed everything. And this story inspired millions of people because it's, it's kind of the uh, classic David and Goliath type story, I feel like. Um, uh, where you actually took on United Airlines back in 09. Tell us a little bit about the video and how that actually came, came about. Sure. Uh, in 2008, March 31st, 2008, I was flying with my brother Don, uh, Sons of Maxwell, we're going to play a one-week tour in Nebraska. And we flew United Airlines for the first time. And we touched down in Chicago to deplane and catch our connector. And there was a woman that's sitting across the aisle <laughs> behind Mike Hiltz, our ba bass player. Right. And she just looks out the window and didn't know we were musicians, but to anyone who was listening said, oh my God, they're throwing guitars outside. And so I was concerned by this. And, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, yeah and <laughs> I ended up uh, trying to bring it to the attention of a flight attendant and a lead agent and somebody inside the airport, and nobody seemed to care. And it turned out, I found out the next day, uh, that my guitar had been really badly damaged. And it was, you know, musicians have a great relationship with their guitar. It's almost more important than a spouse. Right. And uh, I opened my guitar case and my $3,500 Taylor guitar, which I bought when I didn't have $3,500, was really badly damaged. And it was the guitar that I had for all of my favorite songs that I'd written and toured and all that stuff. And uh, I wanted the airline to take some responsibility for sure. that. And it turned into a nine month customer service maze that I called India and I called did everything I was supposed to do. And uh, I never got mad at anybody along the way because uh, I realized they were the bearers of bad news, not the makers of the policies that, sure. were I was, that I was fighting. But at the end of the day, a customer service rep in Chicago s shut the conversation down. She said, Mr. Carroll, you didn't open a claim within 24 hours, so United Airlines isn't responsible for the damage. And at that point, I said, uh, if I were a lawyer, I might sue you. But I'm not. I'm a musician, and I have other tools at my disposal. Right. So what uh, I promised is that I would make three music videos with uh, three different messages about my experience with United Airlines and post them to YouTube. And I said, I'll have some friends help me and uh, you don't have to respond like you promised you wouldn't. I'll keep you tabbed on the progress. And when that first video goes up, I'll let you know so that together we can get to one million that much quicker. Right. That was my goal. Well, and I know that we've all been in those situations with customer ex service issues to where we're calling this person and they're saying, oh, I'm sorry, call, here's another number. Yeah. And here's another number and talk to them. And I know at one point, you know, obviously you're, you're living in Canada and they're saying, go back to the original airport where, where this is. And you're like, how do I go there? Yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. So I'm coming from Canada and I get advice in Nebraska uh, to go back to the home airport in Canada to talk about damage that was caused in Chicago by another airline. It was, it was, it was crazy, right? Yeah. So they, uh, they had me open a claim with Air Canada because the United doesn't have a presence in Halifax. So it got really confusing really quickly. Well, and I think it's important to mention too, it's not, you're not the type of person that's like, you know, you better take care of me or I'm gonna hurt you and I'm gonna go to the internet. You battled back and forth saying, all I want is retribution. And, and the retribution for your guitar was what you paid to actually get your guitar fixed. And right. it wasn't even probably in the shape that it was before it was broken, but you said, you know, it's, as long as, I get this, and I don't even think, were you asking for a dollar amount uh, specifically, or were you willing to? Well, what it, what cost, it cost me $1,200 to get the guitar fixed to the state it's in today, right. which cosmetically looks great, and structurally even sounds almost as good. So I said, why don't we just put this to bed? And it was the first and only conversation we had about conversa right. compensation. We never even, they never even asked what I wanted. Right. And so I just said, why don't you give me $1,200 in flight vouchers? Yeah. Because that would allow me to offset fu future travel costs, they could show me my experience wouldn't be the same the second time, yeah. and uh, it wouldn't cost them anything. So yeah, you're trying to work it out and saying, it seemed this like going to be yeah. a good fit for you guys. Yeah, and that's when they said no to that, and it never, no, no one never. And so I said, I had, I had no option other than to walk away and do nothing. Right, and so, which is probably the action that, or lack of action that most people do is say, right. I tried, but it's, it's too big. I mean, United's too big, and I'm not going to make a difference. Right, and if it so. had been just a suitcase, I would have been one of those people, but sure. The problem was is that it was a guitar to a musician. That's it's very much like a yeah. mother-child relationship. Right. right? Well, and I, I know that. Um, so, so you go out, you put this video up, mm -hmm. 
uh, and and tell us a little bit about. I mean, did you think that? I think I even read somewhere that you said something like, you know, I have a few hundred dollars, uh, some pretty good support with my some friends, and, and I'm a lyricist, and this is what we're going to do. And it was probably like, I'm not sure if we're going to really uh, get some traction. We may, but let's just put it out there. The next morning when you woke up, were you surprised that people were watching? Yeah, I, I was. I was kind of relieved because I was prepared to watch it a million times myself if I had to. Right, to, right. To, to, <laughs> yeah. to get it going. But uh, I woke up in the morning and there was 300 hits and. 5,000 by lunchtime and 25,000 by dinner. And uh, I put it up on Monday, July 6th at 11.30 p.m., starting from zero. Uh, and four days later on Friday, I hit a million. Wow. And now I, I want to tell people where we're at uh, with the video now. But before we do that, let's take a short break. When we come back, I, I want to also show a clip uh, of the video because I'm, it's a truly inspiring story that it really, I think, is, shows how one person can make a difference if they choose to get involved. So stick with us. You will not want to miss this. We'll be right back with uh, Dave Carroll. Real Estate Today offers incredible opportunities, low prices and extremely low interest rates. Hi, I'm Amy Norris from Amy Sells the Beach. Right now, there are opportunities in all areas. Our team can help you put your money to work finding your dream or investment property. And if you're looking to sell, no one can give you better exposure to buyers and make your property stand out. Experience matters when looking for opportunity. I'm Amy Norris. See why we're number one at amysellsbeach.com. Come experience Nolan's. Savor award-winning steaks, Greek-style cuisine, fresh local seafood, and an extensive choice of wines. Whether you'd like to reserve the large private dining room, enjoy a meal on an outdoor deck, or rock the night away in our lounge. Nolan's, now celebrating 25 years of exceeding your expectations for casual fine dining, live entertainment, and dancing nightly. I've been sitting here with musician and entrepreneur Dave Carroll, and uh, we've been discussing uh, the YouTube video going out. Uh, I know that the next morning you said you checked it, and there was 300, and then all of a sudden by the end of the day, I'm sure your phone was ringing off the hook about how much traction uh, this video got. And uh, now I, I know that the video is over 13 million. Yeah. Um, that's really affected a lot of people, and probably even more than that, it's created a lot of conversations. Um, but did you, I, I feel like this story is really, uh, like I mentioned before, a David and Goliath, it really shows how if one person chooses to get involved with, with a, something they believe in, uh, they can make a difference. Um, and, and I think so many times when we see an issue, uh, regardless if it's customer service or something else, uh, we actually think like, well, that's a, I'm glad somebody's talking about that, yeah. but I'm not going to get involved. I mean, what kind of a difference is, am I going to make? Right. And that's if everybody had that mentality, there'd be relatively no change. Right. Um, but uh, one person with a pen really affected uh, United in a big way. Um, I want to show a brief clip. Tell us, uh, this is uh, your lyrics uh, coming out here, and this is what started it all. Take a look. Mm -hmm. Connecting in Chicago's old air While on the ground a passenger said from the seat behind me My God, they're throwing guitars out there The band and I exchanged a look Best described as terror At the action on the tarmac And knowing whose projectiles these would be So before I left Chicago, I alerted three employees who showed complete indifference towards me. United, United, you broke my Taylor guitar. United. Just 
just admit it I should have flown with someone else or gone by car Cause United breaks guitars When we landed in Nebraska I confirmed what I suspected Mike Taylor had been the victim of a vicious act of malice at So I mentioned that uh, it's had over 13 million hits, but talk a little bit about how it actually affected United. Uh, I read somewhere online that, um, you know, obviously you wanted retribution for the guitar, $1,200 in airline vouchers of what you were asking for. And uh, after a nine-month battle, they kind of resolved to, to wash their hands of it. <coughs> but now we're looking at uh, really affecting their stock. I think I read there was like a 10% uh, drop at that time of year That's right. uh, for them. Uh, the Economist and BBC News reported in September of 2009 that uh, the stock had dropped 10% or $180 million. <laughs> and that set ripples throughout the business world because now social media just wasn't this trend that didn't mean right. anything. It, it actually affected the bottom line and profitability of companies. And that meant that companies really had to reconsider the way that they handle customers and how they treat them and how they see them. That's right. Well, and you don't really think about that. You know, you think of social media. <coughs> Excuse me as you know conversations happening but you know again it's not going to affect bottom line but here this one action almost 200 million dollars because they didn't want to come off with some airline tickets that really i think almost causes companies to stop and think and say well wait a minute you know we're really under the you know public eye here and and you know what we do really does matter and we can really be affected by it Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's been a, a talk about a game changer. Social media has been a game changer because I was able to reach 150 million people with my story. <laughs> and uh, that, that means something today. Talk a little bit about the uh, effect since the video has gone out, it, it's gone viral. Uh, United has seen this, this drop in stock and it's obviously there's millions of conversations now happening. Uh, how has that affected uh, your career, not only uh, in music, but in other aspects? Well, would it have the effect that you would anticipate for a musician when millions of people around the world are listening to whatever you're doing, they might want to hear what else you've done. So right. I had a great spike in CD sales initially that my mom had to fill and doing all the mail order. <laughs> that was, those are crazy times. But uh, early on, I started to understand that how it was affecting other businesses as well and, and things like the news of the stock dropping. Yeah. Uh, I started getting asked to do speaking events, and I'd never done any before. But right. uh, I... I did my first one in September of 2009 and discovered that there, it's an awful lot like performing. Sure. You're in front of an audience and uh, to be effective as a speaker, it's just like a musical show. You just can't play all fast songs or you've know, you got to take your audience on a ride and speaking I find is the same thing where you're, you're telling a story, you're hopefully making people feel something and you're injecting messages uh, right. spoken instead of sung. So I found I was really comfortable on that stage but uh, I like the idea of being able to reach people with a positive message and give them something relevant. And when you go out and speak, do you bring your guitar and actually go through? Absolutely. They, give them what they want. They so say, they... dance with the one that brung you. Right? Yeah, right. So I bring my guitar and, and wow. I, I sing a couple times. So I, I always feel like a singer-songwriter first and foremost. And it makes my uh, presentation unique. Well, that's got to be something great for the audience because sometimes you can go to these seminars and sit there and it's just you know one speaker after another and they don't really break it up. But to come out and kind of have fun and, and like you said, it makes it unique. So yeah. that's a great experience for the audience. Yeah. Uh, so obviously now you're not only a successful musician, but you're a successful uh, entrepreneur now really. You're, you got speaking events. And really I, from the video, it seems like you've kind of become this guy that's real, uh, you know, there, has a real authority now when it comes to customer service. Talk a little bit about the, the, the site you created. Uh, it was um, Grapevine. Grapevine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, part, of the, part of my story, I guess, is that it, it was organic and it came out of nowhere. And, and before I knew it, I had been given a platform that was sitting on top of the stories of other people. And yeah. I received 10,000 email in those first early weeks, and people were saying, Congratulations. But it was always followed up with, but this is.